Hello, welcome back. We're going to touch on a few different things in this um, segment, but the, the main one that we'll add to our application, we're going to add dialogue. So I think that I might have promised we would be working on the database next, but um, I want to do a, a couple of things before we do the database one. So the first thing that you'll notice when we go into Eclipse is that I've done an upgrade and I have upgraded to Eclipse Helios, which is the most recent, and the newer Android developer tools, which are much, much better. So that wasn't without incident, and what I'm hoping is that you guys will have upgraded from the beginning, because this these videos are now so old that um, hopefully this this fairly painful upgrade wasn't required, but I, I will give you a couple of hints about what goes wrong and um, how to deal with it. So we're going to look at using the DDMS, um, which is the Delvic debugger, and we can log some messages during execution. So this is your old version of the um, dropping printfs everywhere so that you can tell what's going on but we're going to log things and we can look at um, look at what's going on in this in this DDMS then we will add some dialogues to our application so an alert dialogue and a date picker dialogue which will allow you to change the scores um, sorry, the date picker allows you to change the date. And the alert dialog will tell you that you put in a score that wasn't valid. And both of these I felt were necessary to um, add to the behavior of the application before we started doing the database work. And logging things that are going on in your application is very helpful when working with the database because you, when when your application stops in the emulator and it just says your application has stopped and been forced to close that's not a whole lot of help and walking through it in the debugger takes takes quite a bit of time it's not it's not that easy i mean it can be done line by line but it would be good to narrow down where the problem is Okay, so before I um, go into Eclipse, I want to show you something that might save you a lot of work. So when we installed the Android developer tools, um, on Drive C under Program Files, we have this uh, Android folder. And in this most recent update, or recent updates, they have changed something. They've added a platform tools directory, and everything used to be in the tools directory. So if you're on Windows 7 or Windows Vista, if you go into the tools directory, android.bat is how you can um, update your the platforms that have been released and all of the stuff that gets released that goes into these folders. This can be run directly from Eclipse or it can be run from here and if you run it as administrator that will help you out. And there was also a bug in here. Hopefully you won't trip over this. But if you get an error message, well let's just run this and show you what happens run as an administrator and this is the same dialog that you would have if you had run it from Eclipse but we're now running as administrator the available packages are the, the ones that are out there that you haven't downloaded so here are some that I'm probably not going to go bother going and getting um, so you just check these off and if you haven't done this for a while you'll have a very long list of them and when you 
say install the selected ones you get an error message <laughs> and if you do it will be an error message about it couldn't be installed because it failed to move something from someplace to someplace else so here's the secret googling around you'll find out that if you rename the tools directory to anything else and then run this as administrator your downloads and installs, your updates of the platforms and so on should go much easier. So that, that's that been a little bit painful. So now we have up to um, level 12, probably still not going to be using that. So I'll put that over there. Let's go into Eclipse. <clears throat> so this is new and exciting. The um, developer tools for building the GUIs are now much, much better. And it kind of helps you with seeing where things are and how you can um, just design with the drag and drop editor a little better. It's still not a good drag and drop editor. These things probably you're saying, well, that looks horrible in your video, but they look horrible on the screen as well. It's not the video. Um, but if you hover over them, you can see what what's going on. So we have much better tools now. And we're going to start out by making sure that our application is still running. So here's the problem that we want to deal with first. If someone enters something that is larger than 300 and tries to put that into the data. Do you remember what we were doing in the code when that happens? We did verify the data. So the save click handler, this is the method that executes when the save button is clicked. We validated the scores and then we said, oh, if they're not valid, just pop up a dialog. But we decided to skip that for a while. And that's what we'll work on first. Well, I've, I've also been neglecting showing you how to get around in the Android Developer's Guide. So if you look at the um, Android.com site and then the Developer's Guide, here is the tutorial on creating dialogues. And it starts out with a pretty good description of what you might use dialogues for. So an alert dialogue with buttons on it, a progress dialogue, a date picker dialogue, a time picker dialogue. So we're going to do two of them. We're going to make an alert dialog and we're going to make a date picker dialog. And there are examples in here of how to do that. And a lot of their examples tend to be, um, what's the very polite way of doing it? They write a lot of code so that eventually if you have a very complicated application, you would save time later. And it obscures the simplest part of what's trying to be explained. So, um, well, well, we'll just go through it and we'll make a simple alert dialog that has one button on it. We can use some of this code that will help us. And it's, um, well, I figured it out, so I know it's not impossible. So having this developer's guide open so that you can get used to how they do stuff has been quite helpful. So what we're going to do in here, this is where we decide that the user has entered a number that is larger than 300. So the first thing we'll use is an alert dialog builder. And 
we'll call it builder and it needs a context so the context that we're giving it is this you know what this is do you remember this is the an object of the class that we're in so where where are we we're in an activity this is the enter scores activity so we're we're telling that um, alert dialog builder that we're giving it a reference to the class that we're in in fact to the object that is currently executing now so this this builder is a way of making things easier and we're going to build the characteristics of the dialog box using the builder so if you say builder dot now there's a whole bunch of setters in here so we can set the title to some character sequence so we're going to build a dialog box this is a little thing that pops up and we want it to say invalid scores that can be the title of the dialog box and this builder pattern is kind of interesting okay so each of these each of these methods will return this not the this that we're in but the builder object so what does that allow us to do if we put a dot here we're calling something on whatever this returned so the builders methods return the builder so you can call another method on the builder so all of these are the same methods that we just saw so you can say set title and then set the message so what message do we want in the dialog box how about bowling scores cannot be greater than 300 so there's the message and then say dot this one set cancelable I put this in here because I just wanted to see it work cancelable to false this means that you cannot dismiss this dialog by using the back button you have to actually use one of the buttons that are on it and in fact we're only going to have one button because there's nothing that they can do so we've detected they entered an invalid score and we pop up a message saying that score is too big or bowling scores cannot be greater than 300 and it, all they can do is dismiss the dialogue so we're going to add a button to the dialogue and set positive button I'm gonna just put that it says okay and now here's the tricky part here is the tricky part I'm gonna put a semicolon there so that you recognize that I have not given it the second argument so the button that we've added to our dialog it needs to have a listener okay so we have had listeners for the buttons that we've created but this one is a little bit more interesting because we can't just go into the we cannot just go into the XML file and specify what method we want for the listener of this button so we're going to do something that is a little bit tricky right here so remember what we're doing here is we're passing the second parameter to the set positive button 
there will be a button that has OK on it, and we need to have a method in here that will handle it. So I'm just going to type some code here, and then I'm going to explain it when I'm done. OK, so we're going to put an object in there, and we're going to create the class at the same time. So we're going to say dialog interface. on click listener and look what happened it overrides the on click method and fills in the parameters and gives me a to do and we're going to do something very very simple we're going to say the dialog cancel it And we have a semicolon here that it gave to us, and I'm going to take it out. Okay, so now this is the part that I have to explain. We have created an, um, something called an anonymous class. When you make an anonymous class, you are inheriting from a concrete class or from an interface. And in this case, we're inheriting from an interface called Dialog Interface on Click Listener. So the whole thing is the name of an interface. That interface says we must define a method called on Click that takes a dialog and which button. We're, we're, we're going to answer for. So we're ignoring this parameter because we only have one button and really all we want to do is to tell the dialog to be cancelled. So the interesting thing as far as Java programming goes is when you have this strange syntax it looks like the call to a constructor but it isn't. It's the definition of a class. So this tiny class has only one method in it and it's a, it's a class that implements the on-click listener interface. So an anonymous class, when you make one, you're doing all these things at the same time. We're defining the class that implements the on-click listener. We're making one instance of that class and we're passing it to, we're associating it with, we're passing it to this method as a parameter and associating it with the OK button all at the same time. So it's complicated, but it's not complicated either. We're, we're making one object here that has a method in it that says, what do we want to do when the, when the OK button is clicked? So we're defining in the class, we're making an object of that class, and we're passing it into this method all at the same time. So we're associating the OK button on the dialog with doing this action. And the action is really, um, the action is really very small. Okay, when you see this syntax, let me, um, Put this back the way it should be. Whenever you see this syntax, there is a brace inside of a parentheses. You can be pretty sure that that was, there it is there, an anonymous class. Let me ask Eclipse to format that for us. Okay, that looks nice. So the builder is an object that uses something called the builder pattern and it allows us to just chain together all these method calls. We didn't have to use that. We could have said builder dot builder dot builder dot and we would have had the same thing. 
So we have these things defined the way we want our um, dialog box to appear. It took me a fair bit of trial and error to do that, but if you follow this tutorial for setting this, as many buttons as you want, you can have a, a yes or a no, you can have two or three buttons there. You can have color pickers. It's not that hard. The first time you do it, it's a little bit tricky. But once we have the builder created, we're going to use that to make an alert dialog. So that create method actually makes the dialog object based on the characteristics of the dialog that we created with the builder. And then all we have to do is to show it. Okay, so all of this really, there's not that much. Look at that, 15 lines of code or so. Um, all of this is to achieve one thing. When the user enters a bowling score that's invalid, we're going to tell them why we're not accepting the data that they've entered. And previously what we did is just the thing goes away. So let's um, run this. It will say, do you want to save it? And yes, I do. So if someone enters 306 and they try to save that, oh, we now get a message that says invalid scores, bowling scores cannot be greater than 300. And uh, I'm sure that you can probably do a little bit better than I did there, but I'm not, I'm not great at designing stuff. So if we had valid data put in there, we can kind of tell that it was something happened with it because it comes up as the sum of the correct sum of these um, and that's that's something that I want to touch on now well how do you tell what's going on in the application and you can debug it and step through line by line but there's uh, a lot of disadvantages to doing that. It takes about forever. And we should be able to see what's going on inside of this device. So you know that this is a piece of software, but it's really acting as a machine, as if we had um, one of these Android machines plugged in. So how do we get to see inside this machine what's going on in there while the program is executing? Okay, up here we haven't I haven't done any debug lately, so you should have a Java perspective, a debug perspective, and under here you can look at other perspectives. I don't know why I didn't have debug. I just haven't used debug since I upgraded to Helios. So I want to look under other and we should have a DDMS perspective. And here it is. Okay, so I left the um, machine running out here, the uh, virtual device. And now look around in here what you can see about the device. Here are all of the processes that are running on the device. And one of them should be the Valencia programmers, my bowling scores. And you have more pixels than I do because I'm in recording mode and you should be able to see without moving each of these around what's going on a little bit better. So you have some controls about what's going on in the emulator. 
And one of the interesting things that, that you have down here is everything that's happening in the emulator. And up here, the file explorer, isn't this fun? You should recognize this as a Unix or, or a Linux file system. And if you had a hardware device plugged in, you can navigate around on the file system of the of the device and see what are the actual files in there. This is what I don't like about Linux. There's a, hardly an English word in here. Oh, there's a word media. Lost and foo? No, it's probably lost and found. Okay. Yeah, it just, you get used to it. But it would have been nicer if they had called things by by reasonable names. That's okay. You can look at the heap and the allocation of memory when your applications get really, really um, intense as far as uh, memory usage. If that's important to you, you can look at what's happening. Okay, so if I shut down the emulator, we're back to here. Then you can switch back to the Java perspective and when you want to test something um, you can now when you when you run it you can watch in the DDMS what's going on. Okay so I want to add one more characteristic, one more fun thing that's very very useful. I like to leave these breadcrumbs around for myself. So I want to log things. And they have it built in for you to log stuff. <laughs> so there's a method um, D, which stands for debug. And I want to add a tag. This is information for you that will get dumped into the debugger. So I, I'm going to add the activity, the name of the activity that we're in, enter scores as the tag, and then um, as the message, I'm going to put, I hear the save button. <clears throat> okay, so this is just something that I want to, every time someone clicks on the save button I want to dump into the log that I've heard that click on the save button. This will be really really helpful um, when we're doing the database stuff and you absolutely can't tell what's going on so log a whole bunch of messages and those show up in the um, DDMS so if I run this now, and let's switch to the DDMS perspective right away. Down here you can look at the log. You can also look at the, <coughs> the console. Where is the console? As the, as the processes get loaded into the emulator, you'll see them pop up there. You can have the con a console down here and watch the messages come out at the same as you were in the, um, the other perspective. So this is still happening. The stuff is getting loaded onto the emulator. Oh, I hope it didn't crash it. It's been a little bit, it's a little bit touchy. Now, there it comes. Okay, so a whole lot of messages get logged as the activities, as things start. And, okay, so we can tell now that it is displaying the 
enter scores activity on the emulator. And now if I just click the save button, this is my log message. So enter scores is the tag. I hear the save button is my message. So as things are happening in the code, I want to be able to look at this log and <clears throat> at least have a narrowing down of where to set breakpoints and figure out what's going on. You can dump, dump text out on here. Um, I mean, kind of like system out print line to see the stuff that you're working with. They don't have to just be hard-coded messages like this. Okay. So look at all the messages about um, what it's doing with the memory management inside of this device. That is a little bit scary. I hope it's not helpful, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, if I save that, invalid score. So I heard the save button, there it is in the log, and our dialog pops up saying that it's invalid. And we have now, we've made a little progress. We have logging capabilities, and we have the ability to use pop-up dialogs. So we're going to do one more dialog to make this part work better. So far, all of the bowling scores that we enter have to be on today's date. So if I wanted to enter last week's bowling score, I wouldn't have any choice. I would have to have today's bowling score, and that's no good. So we're going to add a button up here and um, a date picker dialog. So now what we need to do is to um, add a button to our interface for changing the date. And we have this nice new, these nice new interface tools. And this will serve as a good review for the um, building the interface as well as showing you how to use these um, new dialog building tools and we need two more windows over here remember the um, we need to have an outline window so this is much nicer than it used to be and we need to have a properties window over here do you remember how to get the properties window under other Android I guess I'm the one who didn't remember how to get the properties window it's under general properties and it popped up down here which isn't where I want it so I can just drag it and put it up here so we can see the the properties. Okay, so here's the um, the text view where we put the date in and we've been using today's date and we want to add a button near there to allow the user to change the date if they don't want to be entering scores for today. So if we look at the outline of where the this text view is, it's in a linear layout which is just at the top of all of these other things. So to put something to the left of that, I'm going to have to have a horizontal linear layout inside of this linear layout. So let's do that first. Let's look under layouts and say we're going to add another linear layout and drop it in here and we want 
that linear layout to be a horizontal layout. So let's go and look at the properties for that linear layout that we just added. Not much room here. Well, let's start by putting something in it. Let's put that text view in it. And then let's go and get a button and put the button in it. And I do have a horizontal linear layout. And I have the new button that we just created and the date and those are I want the button on the left of it so I want to move that up now the button is on the left of it and I want these to be centered so on the linear layout I'm going to change the gravity the layout gravity to center horizontal. That's not exactly what I hoped would happen. So there's, uh, there's some playing around in here as you get comfortable with this, but if I, if I click on the button that we just added and right down at the bottom of the properties instead of wrap content this is the one that I missed um, match parent is that right no oh my goodness wrap content okay pick the the layout Okay, that's a little bit touchy. Make sure that you're editing the properties of the right of the right component. So um, I have the linear layout property, and right down at the bottom, instead of match parent, I want that one to be wrap content, and that will move it into the center. So now we have for the layout the properties of the linear layout center horizontal and wrap content in both width and height okay and that is right up against the first game score text box so let's do um, padding at the bottom maybe do padding in all four dimensions what if we just put five pixels there that would space things out a little bit better okay go back over to the button make sure that we're changing the properties of the button now and it still says linear layout this is this is tricky okay so I had to click that twice to get to make sure that I was editing the properties of the button I'm going to change the ID of the button to um, change date button and I'm going to change the text on the button to change date and when someone clicks that button 
I'm going to specify the method that will be called. So in the previous videos we actually went into the XML file and changed the onClick property in the XML. We, we don't have to do that. We could just type in the name of the method here. So I can tell you that I struggled with this a little bit, a good way of doing this, and I'm not sure that I have the best way of doing it, but dealing with the date, we have two concepts. We have the um, today's date, which is always available, and then we have the date that the user has changed to. So um, here's how I've approached this, and I'm going to add three more fields in the enter scores activity the month the day and the year and those are private within this class so we're not going to bother to add accessors and mutators So here's how we dealt with the date before. We just ask, what is today's date? And then put it in a nice format and put it on the screen in that um, text view. And that's on create. So I'm going to change this a little bit. Handling dates using just the date class turns out to be not flexible enough. So I'm going to add an instance in here of calendar. So if you ask the calendar for an instance of calendar, um, it will go and get an object that has today's date in it. And it's easy using this object, using a calendar object, to extract the year. And similarly, the month and the day. So all of this is what we had achieved before using the date, but it wasn't easy to get the year, month, and day out of it. Okay, so um, why didn't it like that one? I think it's day of month. There it is. Okay, so we have the same thing that we had before, except we filled in these three instance variables with the current day, month, and year. And now, instead of asking for today's date, we are going to say, ask that calendar object to give us what time it is. And that means get time isn't a very descriptive um, method name, because what it does is it converts the calendar object to a date object. And the date object is one that we can easily work with formatting the date to put it onto the screen. This is, this is really, if you're thinking this is very convoluted, well, it, it is. And there are some advantages to doing it this way. If you want to localize this, for example, and have the date in French or some other language, um, it's a lot easier to do with a calendar object. So what have we achieved here? We have a day, month, and year 
variable that are available throughout the class. And when we use the dialog, the date picker dialog, we're going to change these, day, month, and year. Okay, so remember where in the save click handler, when the user enters valid data, that's when we're going to create one of these bowling scores object, and it has a date in it. So the fields of the bowling scores object, the three games, and the date of the games. Well, we, we decided just put in today's date, and that's not going to be good enough anymore. We're going to, instead of just putting in today's date, we're going to make a date object called date of games and we're going to make a date object but we're going to make it out of the year month and day that is declared as instance variables above so instead of passing in this date of the today date object, we're going to pass in the object that we just created called date of games. So far so good. So we're not just using today, assuming that the date of the data is, is the current date we're going to use the one that is extracted here and saved here. So that's because when someone used the date picker, we're going to change those three instance variables so that when the data is saved, it will use the date that came out of the date picker. So let's work in the um, change date click handler. So when someone clicks on that button that says change the date, what we want to do is to make an instance of the date picker dialog. I'm going to call it dpd. And it will tell us that it doesn't know what that is, so hover over it and let's import from android.app the date picker dialog. Okay, and we're going to make one here, I was hoping for some more help than that. Control space, okay, in Eclipse control space will sometimes help you. So what do we need to pass into the constructor of the date picker dialog? We need the context, and the context is the activity that we're in, which is easy. That's this. And then it will need a control space. Well, we could give it a theme if we want to get involved in that, but we need a on date set listener a callback so we need a listener object here something that implements the on date set listener interface and then we need a year a month and a day okay let's put in the year the month and the day first and we're going to use those ones oops sorry year, month, and day, and those are the ones that we declared up above. So that doesn't compile yet because we haven't put in the object that implements the listener. Once we have the object set up, all we have to do is show it. So I'm going to comment that out for now so that it will compile and we're going to go and work on making this object here, the listener for the date picker dialog. 
and this is a little bit tricky. So the data type is date picker dialog dot on date set listener. That's the name of the class. No, I'm, I'm sorry. That's the name of the interface. And we need to make an object. We need to make a class that implements that interface. I'm going to declare a variable of that type called date picker listener. The dogs enjoy this as much as I do. Okay, so we've got a variable of the right type, date picker listener. And now this is the, the same kind of a process that we went through before. On date set listener is an interface, not a class. So when we say new, one of these, we're defining an anonymous class and we're going to make an instance of it. Okay, so this interface requires us to implement some methods and it will help us if we just hover over it and say add the unimplemented methods and there's only one, it's called onDateSet and it indicates that this is an override. So remember what we've done here. We've defined a class that implements this interface. That interface requires us to provide an implementation for the onDateSet method. So all we have to do is to fill in here what do we want to have happen when this method gets called. This method gets called when the user is done with the date picker. So they've picked the date that they want and this method gets called and it passes in the year, the month, and the day. So those are the things that we want to capture. In our instance variables, year gets... Now we've got two variables by the same name. So there's the instance variable, and there's the local variable. Oh boy, no, that's that's not going to work <laughs> because we're inside of an inner class. This is no longer an instance of inner scores Java. Okay, I'm going to cheat just a little bit. Year of year. Okay, so now we've only got one variable called year and we've on, got one variable called year of year which doesn't make sense but it's it matches this one month of year if you spell it right and day gets day of month. Okay, so all of this is to define this object, which is the listener, for the date picker dialog, and it goes right here. So these guys should compile again. Okay, so we've captured the day, month, and the year from the picker, 
but there's one more thing that we have to do. We have to change the <clears throat> we have to change the date that's displayed on the screen because it's going to still display today's date and we want to change the date of the games that's being displayed on the screen to the date that was just selected using the date picker. This is a little bit convoluted. I think there might be an easier way of doing it. I'm going to make a calendar object, a Gregorian calendar, based on year, month, and day. It doesn't know about Gregorian calendar because we can import it from Java Util. And then do this thing where we convert it into a date object. Take the calendar and call its get time method. Now make a date format. I want to specify the format um, as medium. You can do short if you want to, or long. Convert that to a string. Character sequence, that's why I call it cs date format call the format method pass in the date and remember this guy that's the text on the screen and we're going to call its set text method and pass in that character sequence. Okay, so if you're thinking that was a little bit convoluted and I typed it pretty fast, um, I certainly didn't figure it out that fast. And I'm not sure that I figured out the advised way of handling dates. So um, if you're playing around in these in the Gregorian calendar, class and the date class it's it's a little bit frustrating the way that they've done it and this is a well-known thing in Java the early versions of Java had a very very poor representation of dates they were not sufficiently functional and what they came out with was the Gregorian calendar class which is so incredibly functional you can do just about anything you can imagine with any date at all and that makes it very complicated to use. So um, this is my way of doing it, and I'm not sure that it's the advised way of doing it. But let's review what we've done. So this is the handler for the button. We, we put a big button on the screen that says change dates, change the date. And when someone clicks on that, what we're going to do is we're going to pop open a date picker dialog. The date picker dialog has a button on it that says I'm done picking the date and we have to listen for that button. So we're listening for that button using this guy, the date picker listener. And this is the method that we want to have called when someone says they're done picking the new date. So we've got a listener inside of a listener. It's a little bit complicated. A listener inside of a listener. But the the button on our screen has a listener. And then the dialog that pops up, it has a button on it and it needs a listener. 
But let's see what happens. I'm going to just run this. Switch over to DDMS. It's displaying it. So if we click on change date, here is our date picker. It pops up today. This is May 29th. Suppose I change it to um, June the 30th. Back would be make more sense. So <laughs> the, the games that I bold in the future. That's okay. June 30th of 2010. Let's set that. And we did change this. June 30th of 2010. And let's say that we bold um, 222 and then two perfect games. No, that's too unrealistic. 111 and then a perfect game. That's more realistic, isn't it? Now if we save this, 633 has appeared. Um, did we get any logged messages that things have happened for us? I hear the save button. That's kind of inadequate. Did the data actually go into the data structure? That would have been nice to know here. But it does seem to be working. So, so far as we can tell, we do have a change button, change the date button, which pops open this. These are called spinners. And now we have a date in the future. There's all sorts of things I think of that we could do to make this application better. You shouldn't be able to enter dates in the future, should you? There's probably a fairly standard way of doing that. Um, but that's okay. We're talking about getting our dialogues to work. So if we bold a 307 in 2016, um, it probably should tell us that those are invalid scores. And we have our application is fitted up with some dialogues such as they are. Well, from the previous segment, where we left off was this is what the application looked like. And we added in this segment the ability to pop open a dialogue and tell the user that their data was not valid and to use the date picker so that all of the data entered doesn't have to be on the same date. And <clears throat> I also made a note here that save and show history buttons should be the same thing and that the save button should be kind of somehow associated with these visually and the show history button, which we haven't done anything with yet, is, is how we would get to the other activity in the application to look at the history of our bowling scores, the bowling record. So remember this, the things that we don't know how to do, and we're picking them off one by one. And what we have to do next is to get that data someplace else into a database, and we'll use a local database on the device and <clears throat> entering your bowling scores and then when the application goes away that the scores are gone is of really not much value. So we have to save all the scores that you've entered um, over the, the bowling season perhaps, maybe over your lifetime. And then we've got this other whole thing about the presentation of the history of the bowling scores, which is kind of the the that that's the the purpose of it you have all your scores from before and you can look back at them and see how you're doing well it's it's not a it's not a real 
exciting application, but it's useful for us to learn how to do these things in, in the Android environment. So here's what we did today. We looked at using the DDMS to find out what's going on, and we learned how to log things that are happening that will help us to track down the bugs. And we'll use that logging more as we as we go along. I, I like to log a whole lot of stuff so that it's just very obvious what's going on as soon as possible. And you can look at the file system on the emulator or on your physical device if you have one connected. And we use the alert dialog and the date picker and we're trying not to go and fix things as we find them, staying out of the rat holes. And this one I keep putting at the end of every segment, keep thinking about your app and as you practice and learn stuff, what will magically happen is that the design of your app, which you haven't even started yet, will probably change. Or if you have started it on your own good, um, it will change too. The more lines of code you write in here, the, the more hours you spend in the development environment, the better you're going to be at it. I'll see you in the next one.